Hello again, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips. And welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports, episode 72 on Spreaker and on iHeartRadio. Add me on Facebook, Taylor Phillips. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Page. And follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. Got more stuff to catch up on. The Lions hire, uh, signing a new kicker. A, a new kicker that has actually been with the organization before. The Pistons winning. An, a Michigan State Spartans injury. A Michigan Wolverines football parody. And the Red Wings injury report. First, I want to get to the Detroit Pistons. They beat the Bulls last night, 111 to 109 in overtime. Let me tell you what I, I saw first. Uh, so before I uh, recap, I, I saw some, a few uh, great uh, great uh, three-point shots from Jody Meeks. Most of them went in. DJ Augustine dished out some good assists. One of them, I remember, on a feed to Andre Drummond, for an alley oop jam, Contavious Caldwell Pope pinched in, did some offensive work of his own. They were squaring off against a, a good, a very good Bulls team from Chicago. Um, I, I saw, I saw the Pistons hit more free throws than usual, except Kyle Singler, who couldn't even hit a, who missed two technical foul free throws, but Jonas Jerebko and Greg Monroe. Uh, uh, were were uh, all but perfect, in my opinion. Jonas Derebko, uh only missed only missed one, but that was waved off due to a, a lane violation on the Bulls. So he he made it up. He made that up by making the, by, by reshooting the second and actually making it. Josh Smith uh, also hit a halftime buzzer beater. And also, I also took a look at Mike Dunleavy's. Uh, me Mike Dunleavy's uh, Mike Dunleavy's injury uh, he got he got kneed by uh, he, he got kneed in the midsection by uh, Uh, 
let me see. I got... I, I think Josh Smith uh, accidentally was the one that accidentally uh, kicked him. I, that actually kneed him in the midsection accidentally. Um... I just got an update that Michigan State has announced that Tom Izzo, their head coach, suffered a hernia, underwent a hernia surgery today, and is expected back, expected back in the office later this week. But back to the Pistons. Uh, the about the, the last few dying minutes of the fourth quarter were turned into a a free throw shooting contest, and the Bulls ending up winning that free throw shooting contest, only to tie the game at one hundred one one hundred two and force overtime. The Bulls started out hot by hitting a three, but the Pistons came back. And they pulled away, well, pretty much. But uh, the Bulls hung in there, but got as close as two, as two points in that in that margin. And the Pistons held on to, to win one eleven to one oh nine. Continuous Caldwell Pope had eighteen points. Brandon Jennings got a double double, ten points and ten assists. Greg Monroe led the led the men in blue and red with twenty two and nine rebounds. Aaron Brooks and Jimmy Butler each scored eighteen points for the Chicago Bulls, who are without Joachim, Joachim Noah, and they only played Derrick Rose for fourteen minutes. Uh, Jody Meeks, 13, and Andre Drummond picked up 13 points. Greg Monroe actually, uh, scored 24 points, not 22. The box score says it's 22, 24. The the artic, the recap article from NBA.com says it's twenty says it's twenty two, but but it's twenty four. Jonas Jerebko finished with fourteen. Josh Smith with nine. Caldwell Pope with 18, as I mentioned before. Kyle Singler with just four. Singler finished two for six from the free throw line. Andre Drummond, one for four. Joni Meeks and Brandon Jennings and Jonas Jarebko were all perfect. Jarebko, six for six. Jennings, three for three. Meeks, two for two. Greg Monroe was six for seven. Drummond and Singler uh, were the were the only two Pistons players that struggled at the free throw line. Will Bynum did not play. He was out with a strained right hamstring, and. 
Cartier Martin also did did not also did not dress with shoulder tightness. Healthy scratches were Josh Bostic, Lorenzo Brown, Brian Cook, Gigi Datomi, Spencer Dinwiddie, Aaron Gray, they're both injured, Tony Mitchell and Hashim Thabit. Hashim Thabit. He's injured as well. Uh, but not all the not all the players that didn't play were injured. Pistons next game is uh, tomorrow. That's Thursday, home against the Milwaukee Bucks. And of course, it's at seven thirty, and you can hear it right here on the New Detroit Sports One Hundred Five One. On Detroit Sports 1051 WMGC FM in Royal Oak in the Detroit area. Now, now to some Lions news. Now some Lions news. (laughs) The the Detroit Lions uh, released kicker Alex Henry earlier yesterday, and and they worked out um, Matt Prayer and Jay Feely, and then... Later the same night, they signed returning Detroit Detroit Lion kicker Matt Prater to a one-year deal. Um, Prater has converted... 142 out of, out of 100 field goals out of 174 attempts career-wise, including 21 and 27 from at least 50 yards. However, he's slightly worse away from Denver, 68 of 85, than he was at Sports Authority Field, 74 of 89. Heading into Week 6, the Lions are tied for the NFC North Division lead with the Green Bay Packers, 3-2. and two. Most agree that their chances of making the postseason were strengthened with, a, with the addition of Prater. Uh, that loss, 17-14 to 14 to the Buffalo Bills, uh, was costly as the Packers won their, won their previous game. Prater doesn't have much time to get a feel for his new team the Detroit Lions as they travel to Minnesota to take on a division foe in the Vikings on Sunday at the University of Minnesota football field. I want you to keep in mind, guys, that before he was released by the Broncos, Last off season, he was he had been dealing with alcohol issues. But the reason he was released is because because they didn't use him that much. The Broncos didn't use him that much this season thus far. So the Lions. Might have to work him out some more after after signing his contract. (laughs) 
but I'm sure he'll do fine. Also, the Lions have worked out a couple cornerbacks. Names are Ellis Langster, who was released by the New York Jets last month, and and uh, former Philadelphia Eagles cornerback Curtis Marsh. They want to fill out. cornerback holes now that Bill Bentley and Nevin Lawson are up, are both out out for the season due to uh, severe injuries the Lions also expect to get back back up cornerback Cassius Vaughn After he had a sprained ankle, they expect him back Sunday when they take on, take on the Vikes. That game is televised on Fox, by the way, Sunday at 1. Darius Slay and Rasheen Mathis have started every game for the Lions. Rasheen Mathis has, and Darius Slay have stepped up. Darius Slay almost got injured, but he, he returned to last Sunday's game against the Bills. Also, Danny Gore and safety Issa abdul Kudis have split nickel duties. One little update that that I need to get to here. Michigan State lost Milan Milan Hicks, one of their quarterbacks. Out roughly five weeks with a broken arm. It's a, he's a linebacker, actually. <clears throat> Michigan State linebacker Mylon Hick, Mylon Hicks. Played in all five games for the Spartans this year, notching 12 total tackles and one sack. And uh, the Free Press, the Detroit, the Detroit Free Press... The Detroit Free Press uh, wrote that safety Jalen Powell is moving from safety to outside linebacker to add depth there. And Antonio said that Demetrius Cox and R.J. Williamson both can play nickelback. Because uh, Mylon Hicks played snaps as a nickel defensive back in certain situations. And uh, Spartan, Spartan Nation stands strong. 
that this was written by Joseph Sick. S Joseph Sick. C Z I K K. You can follow him at jo Joey Sick. At the Score Mobile. At, at, at the Score.com. There's that. I want to uh, play a little piece. From Detroit Sports 1051's Drew Lane. This is a parody about um, Michigan football. It's called David Brand's How to Destroy a Winning Brand. This is about, this is a true story about uh, Michigan football hiring Brady Hoke and David Brandon, and they are uh, helping the football program decline. So, here it is. Do you have a proud winning sports brand that took decades to build? Yeah! Are you tired of winning? Yeah! Sounds like you need to attend the new franchise deflating lecture series, Dave Brandon, How to Destroy a Winning Brand. I'm really thrilled. Hear the grand plan from the architect himself, then follow the simple instructions. Hire a mascot-like leader who's chubby, cuddly, and clueless, yet strangely endearing. This is Michigan, for God's sakes. Then in year one, win, because you'll need to buy time to wreck a longtime winner. Michigan wins! And Michigan wins in overtime! Two, start losing. The Irish hold on to win it. Put everything up for sale. Even sell your own name. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald R. Shepard, Director of Athletics, Dave Brandon. Hey, what? Hey, hey. Awkward. People will be so confused they won't say squat. Now raise ticket prices, then raise them again. Then tell your fan base they need a license to buy tickets and keep losing. <laughs> now lose some more. The Spartans all over Michigan, and they are the champions of the state of Michigan. George are Blaha. Are fun yet? Yeah. Meanwhile, when people ask questions, have that chubby, cuddly leader act like everything's hunky-dory. Move his team and still win championship. Now lose some more and repeat. Move oh. his team and still win championship. Uh, all right, then. The natives will start to get restless, which is the what perfect time to tell them you wouldn't Brady change Hope. a thing. That's not changing. That's not how we operate. Congratulations. Here again. You've gone this far. You've almost destroyed your winning brand over a hundred years in the making. But just to be sure, anger the fans you have left by papering the joint and announcing wildly inflated attendance numbers. A lot of empty seats here today, Jim. I almost didn't show myself. <laughs> Today's attendance, 143,000. Yeah, Buddhist. Just when you think your customers can't take any more, lose big. <laughs> and while you're at it, endanger your players. It is appalling that he was left in on that play. When the media come calling, having a chubby, cuddly leader say, he wasn't watching the game. But I didn't see the hit. Now it's time to start telling blatant lies. Fire, Oops, I think this went too far. Order now. Dan Brandis, how to destroy a winning brand. Only $99.95. Oh, geez, the price just went up. That's $129.95. And don't forget, you need a DVD buying license to purchase. This message brought to you by Snapple, Dick's Automotive, Joey Starlight, Bowling Lights, Acme Liquors. Brandon, you're doing a terrible job. You're fired. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, oh, man. So, give it up for Drew Lane, everyone. So that shows how Brady Hoke his is dumb and arrogant the thing the things that he says and that nobody realized that Shane Morris their backup quarterback had a concussion and then they stated it it was a mild concussion oh, man there is no such thing as a mild concussion like i said in ep in episode 71 Is everybody at the University of Michigan dumb? Come on. Well, I mean, not the players, but the staff. Is the entire staff dumb? 
That's what I meant. Um, Red Wings play their season opener at home against the Boston Bruins tomorrow at 7.30 on Fox Sports Detroit and on on that other station, 97 won the ticket in Southfield and all around the Detroit area. <laughs> um, Dan Cleary and Stephen Weiss will not play and neither will Pavel Datsuk. And I just got an update from the score mo from my The Score mobile app that Lions wide receiver Calvin Megatron Johnson has confirmed he has a high ankle sprain injury. So, um, let me see here. He was held out of practice today, according to Kyle Meinke of the Detroit Free Press. The Lions say that they don't know if Calvin Johnson is going to be out. Now that, but earlier, Jim Caldwell strongly uh, considered sitting Calvin Johnson for about six weeks. So, uh, if you back to the wings, if you simply miss Pavel Datsuk like I do, and Dan, uh, well, not Dan. Uh, and Stephen Weiss, and even Dan Cleary as well. Then don't then don't watch the Hockey Town season season home season home open home opener intro to the uh, the roster intro. So uh, that's going to do it for Taylor's Detroit Sports episode seventy two. Make sure you like, make sure you like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips's Detroit Sports page. Follow me on Twitter at DT Two Phillips. Add me on Facebook, Taylor Phillips, and like my Facebook page, uh, and like and join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips's Detroit Sports Group. So, un so until I meet again, so so until I come back on the air again for episode seventy three. TTFN, ta-ta for now.